Hi everyone and welcome to our Olympus Pen F video review. The Pen F is the flagship pen model among the pen series and is the first digital pen to have a built-in viewfinder. Its design is inspired by the original Pen F film camera. Not only is the new Pen F packed with most of the features you would find on Olympus OMD cameras, but it also has a new sensor. So let's get started with the aspect I like the most about this camera. When I first saw the camera, the new creative dial on front didn't really convince me. Olympus designed it to quickly access creative effects such as the art filters, color creator and two new creative profiles. Maybe it's because I'm not that fast about art filters or similar effects, but it seems to be like a missed opportunity to not use this dial for more important settings like for example ISO or shadow speed. As for the two new color and monochrome profiles, I didn't know how easy it would be to use them. You rotate the front and rear dials to change the vibrance of 12 individual colors or change the color filter for black and white. The rear level allows you to change additional settings. It takes some time to make these adjustments and I couldn't help but wonder how well this would work in the real world, especially on the streets or when traveling. After giving these new profiles a fair test, I admit I changed my mind about them and I'm going to tell you why. First, I really love the monochrome profiles. Olympus made an effort not only to render beautiful black and white with rich grey tones, but it also did a good job with the film grain simulation. I can even say that the Pen F produces some of the best digital black and white I've seen from a mirrorless camera. The monochrome profile is easier to use because the most important setting is the color filter. With black and white, you know for example that a red filter will darken the sky, which can give a dramatic look to a landscape image, while a yellow or green filter can work better for portraits. The film grain is very nice as long as you keep it to the low or medium level. I find the high level too invasive in terms of noise ratio. All these settings can be saved in three different profiles. When it comes to the color profiles, they are a little more difficult to use at the beginning. If you have a very colorful scene in front of you, you can choose to give priority to one color over another by desaturating the blue, for example, and keeping the red vibrant. That works if you want to slow down and dedicate more time to a single composition. One problem is that you're relying on the EVF or the LCD screen, and these screens will never be as precise as your computer screen. The results don't always look as good as you imagined when taking the shot. What's interesting, however, is that you can create a custom profile that can match your personal preferences. It requires some trial and error to find the optimal settings, but when you do, the results are really good. For example, here I created a profile with not too much saturation, but lots of contrast, and I gave priority to the warmer colors over the cooler colors. In this other example, I tried to simulate Fujifilm's classic chrome profile by using strong contrast but less saturation. This combination can work well for reportage or documentary photography. This is worth the effort if you like the results straight out of camera, which in other words mean working with the JPEGs. However, if you use the Olympus Viewer 3 software, you can apply that custom profile you created in camera to the raw file. From there, you can make a few more adjustments or start from scratch or switch to another picture profile. This adds more flexibility and perhaps a good reason to give these creative profiles a chance. By the way, these new profiles can also be used for video. The only thing I enjoy less with these profiles is that there can be too many steps in the process. For example, I have to use the quick menu to switch between the custom profiles or change the grain intensity. I would prefer to do everything with the rear lever and the dials. 
I would also love to assign my profiles to the front dial directly because I never use the art filters or the color creator. Finally, the options sometimes display too slowly when using the rear lever. The Pen F fits nicely in the hand, the rear thumb grip is comfortable and most of the dials and buttons can be reached easily. Because the viewfinder is on the left and doesn't stick out on top, the camera is even easier to fit inside a jacket pocket. The only downside is, if you want to use larger lenses, the grip can become more uncomfortable. There is an optional grip designed for the camera, but if you want my advice, the Pen F is designed to be used with small lenses. Except for the front dial, there is a good level of customization and I appreciate the front button especially. You can configure the control pad on the rear to automatically move the focus point. You can also save four custom modes on the main dial. There are a few things that could have been better, like the exposure compensation dial which is hard to turn, but otherwise the design team did a good job. Another complaint is this camera is not weather sealed, and I agree it can be a little bit disappointing, but personally I don't find this to be a major problem. The electronic viewfinder is excellent, large enough even when using glasses like I do. It has a good refresh rate, brightness and resolution. The lag time is good even when shooting action and fast moving subjects. The LCD screen has good resolution, is touch sensitive and can be flipped to the side and rotated. Personally, I would have preferred a screen that only tilts up and down, but I know other users appreciate the full articulation. My favorite thing about Olympus cameras is the 5-axis stabilization, so naturally I could only include this on my positive list. For stills, I managed to take sharp shots down to 2 seconds with a compact wide-angle lens. It takes a few attempts, of course, but it is still impressive. With a telephoto lens, the best result I got was around 1 fourth of a second. The sensor stabilization works well for video, and in some cases you can get perfectly stabilized shots. Even when using a macro lens and taking close-ups of butterflies, the camera gives you great results considering the very short focus distance. The downsides are distortion, which is related to rolling shutter, and the so-called sudden sideways shift. To find out more about the topic, you can watch our dedicated video comparison. The Pen F is packed with a lot of useful features that can make your work easier in specific situations. With the IRS shot, the camera takes 8 shots and moves the sensor slightly between each shot to collect more details from the photo sites in different positions. Then the 8 shots are merged to obtain a high resolution image. Because the Pen F has a new 20 megapixel sensor, you can record a 50 megapixel JPEG and an 80 megapixel RAW image. It is limited to tripod use and static subjects. Live Composite allows you to take star trace shots or do in camera composites with fireworks or light painting. Focus bracketing makes the macro photographer's life easier by taking a series of shots automatically while changing the focus distance. The process is very quick because you don't have to do it manually. Unfortunately, it doesn't do stacking in camera, so you would need to stack the images with a separate software on your computer. There are other things such as electronic shutter, anti shock shutter, and time lapse, so this camera has almost everything you could possibly need. The video quality is acceptable, but when you see what the competition is capable of doing today, Olympus is still lagging behind. They made some improvements with the EM5 Mark II last year, and the Pen F shares the same characteristics. You can shoot Full HD up to 60 frames per second and there's full manual control, but the footage lacks some sharpness and you can also encounter more and aliasing. There is a 4K time lapse option, but it is limited to 5 frames per second, which is really a low frame rate. Another thing to consider is the following. Last year Olympus had one big advantage over the competition and that was 5-axis stabilization for video. While not being perfect, it proved to be very useful in some situations. However, the competition is catching up with sensor stabilization and the latest Panasonic GX80 and GX85 especially are closing the gap.
I admit I am quite used to the Olympus menu and interface, but for a new customer it can be quite confusing. There are some hidden settings in the menu and if you don't know how to activate them, you won't see them. The quick menu is ok, but sometimes you have to scroll a lot to reach a specific setting. I wish they could divide things up a little bit more. The image quality of the Pen F is exactly what you can expect from a Micro Four Thirds camera. Good dynamic range, good low light performance with images usable up to 6400 ISO and in some situations I can accept even 12800. The JPEG engine is good, the RAW file is flexible, I already talked about colors but even the default picture profiles have a nice rendering. So really there's nothing to complain about here. What I want to share is the same conclusion we came to about the Panasonic GX8. They both have the new 20 megapixel sensor, but it doesn't bring anything substantial in comparison to the previous 16 megapixel sensor. You get those extra 4 megapixels of resolution, but in terms of dynamic range or low light, there is nothing really worth sharing. To be quite honest, I forgot that this camera had a new sensor after I first started using it. I've read several complaints about the autofocus of the Pen F, especially in continuous mode. Truth is, I don't find it that bad, and I did obtain good results even in a sports environment. It can misfocus or be slow at times, and it can lose the subject especially if you are using IF tracking. It won't cope with very fast subjects, but it works ok with medium fast subjects. The continuous shooting speed is decent. In single AF it can go as fast as 10 frames per second or 11 frames per second with the electronic shutter. For continuous AF it is better to choose the low mode of 5 frames per second, otherwise the focus will lock at the first frame. The buffer is not bad at 5 frames per second and if you shoot in JPEG the camera never slows down. So really from my experience the autofocus on the Pen F is not bad, but I agree it could be better. Once again there is a lot of competition, and lately Fujifilm, Sony or Panasonic are making interesting progress in that department. Except the M1 that has face detection points, Olympus is using the same contrast detection point for all the other cameras. It's not really a criticism, but more a word of encouragement. The only thing that really disappointed me is that the camera drains a lot of battery life. When I spent an entire day taking pictures outside, starting from 11am and coming back home around 9pm, by the time I came back home I was using the third battery after taking approximately 450 shots. And I didn't record any video or shoot in continuous mode. Another thing that a lot of people complain about this camera is the price. True, it is a bit expensive and especially if you look at the price of an EM5 Mark II for example, now it is $200 less, and it comes with additional features like for example weather sealing. However, on a very personal note, I find the user experience really excellent. If you can appreciate some unique features, the beautiful design and the new profiles, in my opinion the camera is worth the extra money. So thank you for watching, don't hesitate to leave a comment on this YouTube video if you have any questions, please like and subscribe and more important, enjoy taking photos. See you next time, bye bye!